As a history enthusiast, there is a long list of places that I would like to visit. I would like to go to Peleliu. Uh, I would like to go to the island of Iwo Jima, to go see the, the ruins in Greece, and to maybe go to, to Machu Picchu. But one place that I've always wanted to go, that's been near the top of my list, is the spot where we are going today. I am about ready to hop on one of these big red buses and go up this big dead gum mountain to that little tiny dot at the top. That little tiny dot was something that took 13 months to build and was uh, scheduled to be completed in time for Hitler's 50th birthday. We all know it better as the Eagle's Nest. We just made it to the parking area here at the Eagle's Nest and holy smokes, look at this view. <laughs> um, this is really something else. Uh, so in, in the 1930s, uh, Martin Bormann, who was Hitler's uh, secretary, commissioned the construction of the Eagle's Nest, which is above us. So you can't get cars up there, that's why there's a parking area here. Uh, but there is a, an access tunnel that goes to an elevator that would have taken the guests of the Eagle's Nest up to the top. Well, here we are, again in the parking area. And up here on the, the Kelstein uh, outcropping, well, there is the Eagle's Nest. So uh, the, the guests of Hitler and Hitler himself would have come up the mountain just in the same way that we did and would have entered into this tunnel. Now I've seen some uh, accounts that they would drive into the tunnel all the way down to the elevator and uh, some that he would be dropped off. Uh, probably the answer is both. Uh, but there are a few things on, on the door of this access tunnel that I want to show. My goodness, I cannot get over the view here. Uh, so I, I stood back and we allowed a few people to clear out because I'm marginally antisocial. Uh, and again, here is the access tunnel that would take you to the elevator. And uh, on the American Artifact series, we have something pretty cool, an artifact that, that Eric is going to be bringing to this very spot that is associated with this door. Uh, but I wanted to show a few things. So American soldiers would have frequented this spot after the end of the war and uh, at the end of the war. And uh, there are little bits of uh, graffiti where they carved their name into, uh, into this tunnel door. All right, here I found one of the etchings with a name on it. So somebody with the initials GFS, and then you can see the date 1945 uh, with a diamond around it. Uh, here is another one. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, I can see 1945, and it looks like several initials there, like a WHOMLG. I think I see a GLO. All right, but these are soldiers who would have left their mark on, uh, on Hitler's place. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, make our way down the tunnel. Okay, now as I mentioned, uh, this, this tunnel is wide enough to hold a vehicle. Uh, 
and again, sometimes uh, it said that Hitler would be driven down to the end. Sometimes that he'd be dropped off and would walk. Uh, but <laughs> this is kind of a surreal moment for me. Uh, I've, I've wanted to visit this place for a long time. And uh, Eric was telling me that on one of their visits, they were here with Brad Freeman. And as they were walking through here, they were singing Blood on the Risers. Uh, now, I'm not going to sing because I want people to watch this video and not tune out. Uh, but anyway, pretty cool experience. All right, almost to the elevator now. Uh, during the Third Reich era, there, there would have been heated air that would have been forced through this tunnel. And uh, right here at the end, there would have been a, a swastika in the stonework, uh, but it has been sandblasted out. But if you look hard enough, you can probably see in some of the darker areas uh, remnants of it. And then as we move in through here, we already got Eric in here. Uh, well, there's the famous elevator. Okay, now uh, I just found out that I am not allowed to film inside the elevator, so I'm going to honor that request. But something else that's kind of interesting that people may not know, if you look at these two green benches here, uh, these would have originally been in the elevator uh, so that you know, Hitler wouldn't have to stand uh, as he you know, ascended to the eagle's nest. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, head on up. Okay, quick amendment. I uh, talked to the elevator operator and uh, he said that I could go ahead and film in here. So this is uh, the famous golden elevator of the Eagle's Nest. Man, this thing is wild. Okay, now there's the elevator that we used to get up here to the Eagle's Nest. Uh, now, when the Allied soldiers got here, that elevator was not working, so they had to climb up. And when they got here, well, right back here at the kitchen was going to be the place that they made a beeline for, because that's where the silver was at. All right, we uh, just got up here to the Eagle's Nest and uh, made our way first to the great room and uh, holy smokes I have to say this place is nice uh, I, I can see why there are so many pictures and photos that were taken right here in this very spot Seriously, I cannot believe that I'm here right now. Uh, this this really is something else. I've seen so many pictures over the years, and uh, of course it's depicted in the series Band of Brothers. Uh, today, the, uh, the Great Room serves as a restaurant, and uh, you'll have a lot of tourists, uh, like me, uh, who will make their way to this room first. And uh, probably the, the main centerpiece of this room is this giant red marble fireplace. Uh, now, it was said that this was a uh, gift from Mussolini 
uh, for Hitler's 50th birthday. In, in recent years, that has kind of been called into question. Uh, there are other parts of this area that uh, that have this, this red marble, uh, or other parts of the eagle's nest. And uh, as a matter of fact, they even note that on the signage here. Uh, it says this fireplace is made of marble, probably a gift of the Italian dictator Mussolini. And then if we look closely, Eric and I were checking this out earlier. Well, there are all kinds of etchings and graffiti from U.S. soldiers who, uh, who left their mark right here on this fireplace. But yeah, a lot of history right here in this room. Okay, moving out of the great room now to the dining room here at the Eagle's Nest and uh, you can see some people dining wondering why some bearded redneck is talking into a camera uh, but there originally would have been like a big long table that would have extended the length of this room and then if we continue on down well you can see through that door is the kitchen. All right, so right now I'm standing in the kitchen area, which they've asked me not to film in, but I can film this room, which uh, nobody really ever gets access to. This was the bodyguard room for the Eagle's Nest. So the, the bodyguards who were, were stationed here would come back here to kind of relax uh, or maybe kind of get away from the boss or something a little bit. But uh, yeah. Very cool to be able to, to see this part of the eagle's nest that uh, typically is restricted. Okay, so uh, moving into another room here in the eagle's nest. So back here is the, the great room. So I'm leaving the great room now and entering into a space that is known as the, the Charlotte's Keller room. I think I'm saying that properly. Uh, but this has also been called the, the Ava Braun room and holy cow, this is quite a view. So again, this room here is called the Charitzkel room and you know has this, this wood paneling giving it a, a very rustic look. But if we move out this way, look at the view from this space. A little bit cloudy today, but man oh man. This is really something else. Let me go over to, uh, to this window here as well. And again, you can see these snow-capped peaks in this room. Wow. All right, uh, gonna move now to the Sun Terrace. Moving out of the Charts Kell now and onto the Sun Terrace. So you can see here on the left they have some information panels talking about uh, the Kelstein House or the Eagle's Nest. And uh, originally, you, you see some, some glass panes up here. Uh, this would have all been open, but uh, this would have been a, a place where people could come out and kind of lounge and talk and look out over this view right here. Man, that is something else. And again, we, we have some, some clouds and fog and some weather today, but still 
quite the, uh, the amazing view. It's a view that was enjoyed by Hitler a few times, and then later by men from the U.S. Army. All right, just uh, made our way out of the Sun Terrace and uh, are now here on the, I guess what you'd consider the backside of the Eagle's Nest. And uh, we're gonna go up to the top of the hill where a lot of well-known photos were taken of uh, this spot right here. But when you get up here and look, man, this really is an engineering marvel. I think at the time it was one of the most expensive projects that had ever been undertaken in Germany. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. We've moved up this Kelstein Ridge just a, a little bit and uh, are, are looking back now at the Eagle's Nest. This is a, a view that uh, you, you see a lot of photos of people getting up here kind of on the higher ground and then taking a, a snapshot back down. As you can see, naturally there are a lot of people here today. Um, let me just walk back down here real quick and show something else. All right, had to come back down a little bit further than what I thought. But uh, in addition to the eagle's nest, well, they also have some defensive positions that were set up here as well. Now, on April 25th of 1945, there was a bombing raid of the Obersalzberg. And right up here, just over these mountains, uh, the RAF would have flown a bombing mission right over those mountains down into the valley and uh, didn't hit the eagle's nest but hit a lot of uh, important structures down below in the valley but uh, yeah a little machine gun position or anti-aircraft position right there I'm not sure which I'll have to look that up okay since we're here now uh, we might as well go to the top but again, just look at this crazy view. This is really something else. We got a little bit of snow starting to fall right now. So, yeah. Man, oh man. Something else. All right, now in all of the videos that I've seen at the Eagle's Nest, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody come back here or come all the way to the top. So we're going to uh, take a look for ourselves. And uh, holy smokes. Dude, this is absolutely stunning. Holy cow, I feel like Sir Edmund Hillary right now up on this thing. What an incredible view.
right, well, there we go. <laughs> that was uh, the Kelstein house, or Hitler's Eagle's Nest. Uh, on on the, uh, the bucket list of history items, that, that is a big one that I just checked off. So much history here. Uh, this place was at one time a, a symbol of, of power and, and of Nazi dominance, and uh, later became a symbol of that power being crushed uh, when Allied soldiers came up here and occupied this place. Uh, but yeah, so cool to be here today. Uh, so glad that I had the opportunity. But uh, we got a lot of other places that we are going to be visiting right here in uh, Birchesgaden. <laughs>